we also have good numbers now so let me just press the go live button on our youtube channel so umesh just for your information i will also inform earlier that we are going to go live on our youtube channel of entrepreneurship cell so uh, let us do no, uh, don't wait further and let us start this meeting uh, and let me welcome each and every one those who have uh, registered for this workshop and uh, before i start we i let me just inform each and everyone here we also have dr pramod joshi who is the chief mentor for entrepreneurship cell of glau and also dr manoj kumar with us who is the uh, associate director for technology business incubation center and also the chief coordinator for newgen idc so i request i request everyone to, to keep them uh, muted Hello. yeah so uh, before before i introduce uh, mr umesh i request uh, dr manoj kumar sir to say few words thank you thank you ravi and uh, it's a very good moment for all of us that we have a, uh, with, uh, with us mr umesh and he has spared his valuable time to uh, say his uh, share his experiences to uh, us as well as our students so on behalf of gilian city and gile entrepreneurial ecosystem uh, i welcome you sir and uh, i i wish that students will be benefited with your experience so with these words uh, once again i welcome you and over to you ravi thank you thank you sir so uh, let me once again uh, inter, uh, welcome mr umesh and uh, introduce mr umesh so umesh rathor he is the founder of uh, the lean canvas uh, and also he has co authored uh, authored two startup books the first one which was named as the fun of being in a startup and the second recently he has uh, authored one book called as the startup chanakya and uh, both this book has got tremendous response from the uh, millennials the, the gen z and also mr umesh is the uh, niti ayog atal innovation mission a uh, mentor of change also so uh, i will not take much time because we have already gone past to 11 am and uh, i'll give back this virtual platform to umesh and he is going to take the session which is the first session of the workshop on design thinking and critical thinking so he is going to take you through the world of design thinking so over to mr umesh uh, thank you so much uh, ravi thank you so much uh, the other dignitaries for having me for this session at your esteemed institution um i wanted to be more interactive so i'll be asking questions uh, whenever you feel like you want to share a few insights you can you know raise your hand or um, you can directly speak on the mic and just make sure you when you speak uh, you have to also turn off the mic so it does not cause cause any kind of inconvenience further so let's start by uh, understanding this uh, concept you know it's a one hour session so i'll just take you through and at the end uh we will have some activity based on this okay yeah so this session is dedicated to uh, uh umesh umesh can you please uh put this in full slide of uh, sure. uh, like yes now yeah. now it is visible thank you <laughs> thank you so as uh, you know earlier also i have taken a session this session is also dedicated to dr kalam who is an inspiration for me and so many other people across uh, the globe um with this motivation let's start and understand the 21st century life skills which are very critical for us to know already you are aware now we are having a design thinking session and then you will be having a critical thinking workshop so there are several skills which you want to hone up and um, as we see the industry is growing at a at a rapid stage at the same time we uh, you know in academia have to make sure that we provide those uh, you know tools those guiding materials for our uh, gen next so that was the motivation to write two books in first place um 
to begin this session with i would like to discuss a little bit about this brand called airbnb how many of you are aware of this brand uh would you like to share some insights about it if you have used this brand earlier or you have come across this brand do you know any brand which is similar to airbnb in india yes uh guys please be interactive we have allowed everyone they can unmute themselves and speak they are not restricted anyone so please be vocal yes so have you heard about this brand if not i'll introduce no oh, worries <laughs> so airbnb yeah you might have heard about oyo rooms right so, so it's a brand are... so there are two 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 uh, in chat box one is the oyo and jostel correct correct so there are many yeah aston and promotes are very good so these are some of the examples which you have i want to just explain briefly about uh, how oyo room works basically you have a website where there is a host who has rented his apartment any guest who is looking for uh, you know uh, an a uh, apartment to stay for a couple of days or maybe months he can find this property uh so airbnb gets approximately 6 to 12% of the commission uh because they are getting the information of this guest on the website and uh airbnb also manages some kind of an insurance if the host creates some nuisance at the property right so host and the guest can both give reviews to each other and that's how this model works based on trust based on you know mutual understanding there is no as a direct call made by airbnb to guest or host to identify each other it's purely based on you know website that it happens a uh, completely digital interaction so how it is done what what is the role of design thinking in all this and uh, how the experience of the user has to be made in a in a, in a, in a right way so let's try to you know understand it uh, by going a little further so we know that whenever we try something new there is a possibility we might fail most of the times when we think of doing a startup you know the chances are we might fail because 90 to 95 percent start to fail but that does not stop us from trying right if you want to become a ca like you might be having a lot of friends who are pursuing it so passing rate is 20 30 percent but still they give it a try when you talk about engineering uh, uh, you know uh, or upsc examinations for example they are quite tough but still they give it a try so they are assuming that they might fail but still they give it a try so at a uh, young age it is more feasible for you to pivot to try something new and experiment right now when we look at uh, design thinking it has basically four pillars okay and we will take a look at it one by one i'll be going in depth uh, about it and how you should uh, look at these four pillars so can anybody guess what could be the most important thing to begin with in design thinking can you guess randomly if i'm thinking of designing something what should be the priority as such what should i cater to how should i look forward to approaching it okay so uh, first and foremost is empathy okay how empathetical you are towards others right you can only become a problem solver when you understand the problem well right so and to know the problem well you need to put yourself under someone else's shoes so we have got some uh, answers yes hasten has written problem uh, empathy very good hasten i hope i am spelling it right uh, dr simp has written problem yes so to identify the problem you need to be empathetical in nature uh the more closer you are to your customer what problem they are facing uh you will get more insights and that will help you to make up a brilliant product right and there is a quote also quite famous one the person or the brand which sits more with the customer wins so it is really important how empathetic you are towards the problem which you are solving for whom you are solving what is that they are going to gain at the end okay so design thinking starts with empathy okay you need to be empathetic in nature to understand the third person or other person's perspective for whom you are you know making a product or service right the next most important aspect okay now before we move to that let's take a look at this empathy map 
it gives us a just about what a customer what our end user uh, what a persona for whom we are solving the problem might feel so these are divided into various things right so first could be what they think and feel about a product okay or what is that their hopes about the product what could be the worries about a product right uh, what could be the you know where could they see this product is it that they are going to see it in the market is it that uh, you know they'll be finding this somewhere in an environment uh, in in where they work is it related to their family what is that how they are going to hear about this product so are the influencers going to reach out to them uh, are the friends going to share insights about it with them then speaking and doing okay what is their attitude how they work around uh, what is their part to go from office to work work to office what they do in between what is their behavior at work are they calm are they always hyper right what is their buying behavior how they deal with things how they deal with failures how they deal with success so these are certain things which we need to map okay when we say we are empathetically in nature we need to absorb these things from a customer's perspective right then could be the pains what are the obstacles our customer has what kind of fear they have if uh, why they are not using xyz product what is the challenge they are having with that what are the gains what are the wishes what are the goals are you able to meet that correct why would the person buy your product what is the end goal you know they are going to achieve by buying this product so uh, design thinking begins with understanding these 360 degree perspectives and it's not an easy task not many companies are successful in doing so in fact google lens a great product you might be aware did not hit the market and we don't know when it would be improvised or how better it will be thought of and will be coming in the market but people have been working it for you know almost a decade now so it's really important how you map empathy how you understand and absorb these things from your customer perspective or the user perspective next thing very important thing is collaboration when you are doing design thinking you need to collaborate with people you know uh, there is a, a company called sdfc credila you might be aware of it's a loan uh, giving company they they provide educational loans now when they started off the protagonist the entrepreneur uh, mr bora he actually floated some question he collaborated with universities to understand the challenges of people going for loan people going for educational loan how that industry is what are the challenges the people who are going for ms probably what challenges do they face uh, while you know applying do they get the loan on time what are the conditions so they actually floated this in collaboration with university so collaboration in design thinking is a very important attribute you need to collaborate with people to understand as to what aspects how we can collect the data how we can collect the information how we can understand the customer centricity about our product and what are the things uh, they look for right so the more you know the number of collaborators to get this 360 degree because you alone cannot do everything right uh, you need to have uh, some partners who can help you achieve these things right so that's why collaboration is important next is inclusion right you cannot design a product for uh, a chinese uh, for a chinese market by sitting in india only or you cannot design a product for african market by considering examples or case studies from indian market you really need to go and involve some people from that community who are the people who are connected to those community who understand things better right for example you are solving a problem for a rural village some of the issues they might be having and you are planning to solve a problem for them so what is your perspective towards it how you connect with them how closely you monitor it what are the changes what are the expectations it can only happen when you include them i as a person cannot sit in a you know a board room with ac fans off and you know having a pizza uh, sitting over there and this discuss about something happening in rural area i need to go there i need to involve those people so that is really important that how you can come to an inclusion process how you can involve many more people 
in the process of your design thinking, right? Next aspect is uh, repeat and iterate. Whatever you understand, all these perspectives which people will share, a lot of times people are also not aware what they expect, what is the end goal they want to achieve, what is that they really expect from that product or what is the problem. It is not clear completely for the people. So it is really important how you are repeating this activity with many more people to understand their perspective and how you are iterating it. Are you able to iterate it in the right sense? Right. It is really important for us to iterate it in the right sense. Otherwise, our future or the future you know, steps in design thinking might go for a toss. Because first, we are acting like a sponge bob. We are taking insights. We are just learning. We are just observing things, how things work. right? And then we kind of use it as a use case and then uh, you know, build our iteration that, OK, these are the challenges faced by you know our consumers. I'll be giving some examples about it later in these slides because then we'll be having a short activity of you know design thinking, uh, and we will try to gain some insights as to how you think about. It. So these are the four pillars. Anyone can quickly revive what were they? You can already see it on screen. First is empathize. Second is collaborate. Third is inclusiveness, bringing all people together, right? It helps in evaluation also. Repeat, iterate, and test for solutions. Okay, so uh, can you tell me what is the most important aspect in this? All whatever is mentioned on the screen, empathize, collaborate, including every idea, being inclusive about it, repeat, iterate, and test, what could be the most important one with respect to design thinking for startups? Anyone can guess, you can type it in the chat box. Out of these six, what could be the most important? Yes? Anyone would like to give it a try? Okay, we have some answers, including every idea. Okay, empathize. Yes, Tanya, very good. Empathize is the answer again. You have to be empathetical, collaborate with others and everything comes secondary. But it's really important that you start with empathy, right? Okay. So uh, empathy takes a lot of time in design thinking process, okay? We will be talking about it now, a little further about it. But uh, this is an ideal setting, okay? How design thinking workshop is usually done. And uh, right now we are doing it online and it's only for one hour. But I conduct these sessions where, you know, it's immersive or spread on two to three days where people come together and, you know, talk about personas, what challenges they have, how we can get empathetical towards them for the product or idea which we are planning to launch, maybe a mobile app for that matter, how we can think about. So on the screen, you can see some people, uh, some pictures on the, on the boards, right? These are the personas. These are the ideal people for whom the problem is being solved, for whom we are innovating something new. And you can see the sticky notes. These are certain ideas, certain attributes connected to these people. What they think, how they, you know, what is the behavior, how they, uh, you know, observe oh. fear. So all these things are part and parcel of this whole, whole process. So you can see so many pictures of people around. They have interviewed them. They have tried to understand their challenges. And that's how you deep dive into design thinking. Once you know these four pillars, you need to start working on how you will become empathetical. Empathetical does not mean just putting your hand on someone's shoulder and saying that I understand you. You need to question them. You need to frame the right questions in front of them. So this is the ideal process of design thinking, right? You have empathize. So in empathetical, when we are getting empathize we are opening the triangle opening the diamond we are diverging we are increasing our horizon okay 
X, Y, Z could be a problem. Second could be a problem. Third, fourth, fifth, five, six. Likewise, we can have a very broad perspective. What all things our customer is expecting? We can empathize. We can listen more to them. And empathetical in nature, being empathetical is basically how you listen to people. The more you listen, the more they will tell you. Okay. When you speak more, people don't quite often like to share things with you. So you need to be divergent. You need to open the diamond. Okay. It's a, these are two double diamonds. Uh, usually it's called a double diamond approach also. It is used for idea validation before you go for the final solution. So you diverge first where you are thinking about more you know, problems which our customer or consumer is facing. Then once you have found that many people are saying the same thing again and again, it's getting repetitive in nature. That means they are lost of any other further problems, any other further attribute. Then you kind of make a note of it and then you start converging. That is you reframe. So from all the problems you have identified, you now start converging down as to what are the main pain points. What are the actual issues out of 100 interviews which you have taken? What are those five aspects which have repeated? Okay, how many times it has been repeated in the whole process, in the whole, you know, interviews which you have done? Uh, you, have, you can take physical interviews, you can send questionnaire, you can have uh, voice interviews like video conferencing and all. But what is that? You need to make a note of it and then you have to see as to what actual problems are then put them into blocks. There would be two, three, four, five areas. Whatever the things we discuss in empathy map. It could be that they are talking about the hopes. This is what they're expecting from the product. You can talk about the fear. They might think, oh, this product can have these problems. Uh, they might have a problem with respect to understanding it. They might not have the knowledge about it. That could be also a, a fear factor of not using that product. So once you empathize, then you reframe. When you reframe, you have four or five attributes left, which are common out of all the things which you have discussed. Now, once you have discussed all these things, you start ideating on that. Okay. You start ideating. Now, when you are ideating, again, you are diverging. You are diverging. That means what solutions we can provide. What ideas could be. If they have given 100 attributes, if they have talked about 100 problems and you have, you know, converged it to four or five, what could be those five areas? What kind of solutions you can come up with those five areas? Thinking limitless over here. As if you are God and you can solve their problem. You have all the power in the world. What tools will you use to solve their problem? What is that you can use actually to solve these five problems which they might have? And you have all the resources. That's why I'm saying that you might be termed as, you know, God who has all the powers to solve these problems. And that's what we also believe, like God actually solve people's power. I don't know how many of you are atheists, but I'm, I believe in God. So I'm just taking this example. So when you diverge again, five problems, how many various methods you can solve these five problems? Okay, can it be solved by software? Can it be solved by some hardware? Can it be solved by talking to that person? Can it be solved by good marketing? Can it be solved by some, uh, you know, educational tools, resources? What could be those attributes? How we can make the customer more happy? How we can make them more, you know, user friendly to our products, right? So how we can make them inclined towards? So once you have actually start diverging then you will come up with certain things which you might be able to do, which you might not be able to do. So once you have actually diverged five problems and say about 20 ways by which you can solve it, in your brainstorming session with your peers with whom you are brainstorming and collaborating, then you actually start prototyping. So out of those 20, 25, you might not be able to prototype all you might be able to prototype only five maybe using cardboards, using some colors, using some paper, using some simple software applications which can create, you know, an application to just showcase them how will your final product look like. 
not exactly a final product, exactly a prototype. So now you start converging it. Out of those 25 solutions for five problems which you identified, how you are converging, okay? So this is the problem space. This is the solution space, okay? Let us move ahead a little bit. Yeah, so when we look at it as a design challenge, you might be aware of design hackathons and all happening. You have a lot of confusion on the left side in the problem space. Most of the startups fail because they have no clarity on the market need itself. Why they have not the clarity of market need? Because they have not understood their customer. For whom they are building a product? Who is going to be the end user? When I write a book, I have a clarity. This is the age group who will read this product. Like students who are below 25, it will attract them more, right? So I have a clarity. I use that tone. I use those examples based on it. That's what a startup needs to do. That's what the process of design thinking in a basic nutshell is. That how you identify the problem for whom you are trying to solve this problem, right? Then once you have identified uh, your problem space, you have clarity on this. Slowly, gradually, through conversion, divergence, and then conversions, you get clarity. And in this process, at the end, you come up with one or two solutions. And based on your capacity, based on you know, how you want to move it, you can decide upon which product you would like to come up or build after prototype as a final product, right? So this is also with respect to you know, the design thinking, branding, where you can think about uh, what are the pain points. And at the end, what our product is trying to do is that product able to find solution to all the maximum problems which this consumer has, right? Remember we talked about 100 list of exhaustive list of problems, then converging to five. So is our final product actually solving problem of these five problems, right? You might be aware there are advertisement, Jandu Bam, one, one, five problem, one solution. There is an advertisement of a soap, like five problems, one solution, like in cosmetics. So that's how they are branding it also, right? Whatever problem you have identified, that only you are going to create advertisement. So you make the consumer more, you know, uh, inclined towards buying your product. That's the process. So you identify the channels, you identify the problems, and then you start building the prototype. And there are certain things which you can follow over here. Like in empathy, you can have design challenge, stakeholder mapping, who are the users, can you identify them? What is their persona? What background they come from? What is their age group? What earning they have? Can they spend XYZ amount on your product, right? What is their context mapping, roadmap, how they buy the product? What method they select? What is their behavior, their ethnography? What language they speak, right? Uh, what kind of, uh, what we can say, locality they stay in. Like, for example, if you want to open a Starbucks, you will look at these aspects. Who are the people who are going to buy Starbucks coffee? You cannot open it everywhere. You know which locality as ideally a Starbucks should open. That process uh, of answering that question is design thinking. You are thinking from a perspective which should match you know, your customer and the product from your design. Then empathy mapping is there, exploring personas, journey mapping, research sense making. How might we, this is a question which you might ask, how might we solve this problem? How might we come up with a solution for XYZ problems? Brainstorming, thinking different, okay? Uh, one is rational thinking. Okay, this is the problem, these are the solutions. Once you have done that, you can also think reverse way. If I do this, what might go wrong? If I do this, what might be going wrong from our perspective as well as from consumer's perspective, what challenges you might face? So you can think rationally as well as complete opposite thinking. Think wrong. Okay, it's not bad a thing when you're doing design thinking process to think wrong, right? So what could be the worst case scenario? What could be the worst idea ever? What could be the worst product for your consumer for the problems they are facing? It helps you to discard those things, right? Affinity mapping, uh, idea filtering, value mapping for stakeholders, low fidelity prototyping, 
paper prototyping. We'll be doing an activity on paper prototyping today uh, due to a less amount of time we have. But in workshops, we actually have a lot of time to do this you know, hands-on prototyping. Then digital prototyping is possible today. You have tablets on which you can design or you can draw on laptops. Storyboarding, you can draw a storyboard, how your consumer wakes up, what he does next, where does your where does your solution or product fit in in that journey? So in the morning he woke up, he did brush, he had a you know got freshen up, took his breakfast, took a bath and whatever. Then he got, went to office, he worked in the afternoon, he had a break. In the evening, he's coming back. He goes to a you know a store for vegetables and all. And what happens over there? So how your product would be placed in this journey? How and where your consumer will find this product? Acting it out, you can also do role plays, right? Testing and iterating, and then finding a design solution. So it's a very broad aspect. It's a very, very broad, you know, activity. Uh, it takes a lot of time. It's not like I have an idea and I can quickly do it. And tomorrow I'll be having a solution and I'll launch a product. No, if you're doing it, uh, you are actually gambling, right? Uh, and I will not prefer you do that. So it's really important for us to sit down, have some people around us, talk about our ideas openly, sh let them share their views about it, what channels how you can identify to reach out to your customer, what uh, challenges your customer will have to find your product, and all those things. These 360-degree perspective is really important. Why it is important? To make your startup sustainable to make your idea sustainable. Otherwise, it can go for a toss, right? If you don't have a clarity, when you have ambiguity, it can create a problem in the future. May, may not be right now, but in the future, you'll have a lot of issues with respect to it. So it's really important to doing this process. Okay. And Omesh, can yeah. I come in here? So one yeah. great example which I see of design thinking is the Paytm voice box. So we all know that Paytm is already a big uh, giant in the fintech industry, right? But still they are, they keep coming with new innovations, right? And the Paytm voice box that we see in all these vendors and small shops that we see is a great example of design thinking, right? And I, which I, uh, the story which I came to know is that the uh, Paytm founder, he was, uh, when he was visiting, because he used to visit the small shop at the Dhabas, right? And from that, from where he comes to know that this is a problem, that the small shopkeepers, they are not acknowledging the payment. And that's how this, that Paytm voice box uh, so, uh, innovation comes out. So the design thinking is, can be applied at any time, anywhere. It doesn't matter whether you are and what you are. Absolutely, very true. Uh, one more example, which comes to my mind. Thank you, Ravi, for adding. Um, another example is of uh, Tata Sumo, right? So Sumo uh, word came from the person who actually identified the challenges faced by the truck drivers, and uh, in his, uh, you know, uh, due to his contribution uh, to this idea, uh, Tata gave the name Tata Sumo, okay, for their vehicle. So what this guy used to do in the afternoon, he used to vanish from the company, okay. Uh, during the lunch hours and everyone was wondering where does this guy go so uh, every day he used to go and sit with the people who were truck drivers at dhabas and when he was sitting with them you know showing empathy uh, collaboration inclusivity right whatever we've discussed so far so he came to know problems faced by these truck drivers what the challenge they have in their vehicle from there they came to know how better they can do with their trucks and uh, that's why because of his such incredible contribution and insights to make their trucks better the tata gave uh, sumo so sumo is uh, he's a marathi guy i am not recollecting exactly the name but you can identify the story on google as well so this is another example you know very subtle example so anyone who is working in this product uh, designing or uh, you know startup uh, we want to do startup you need to focus on these areas, right? So let's go ahead a little bit more. Okay. 
Right. Um, so when we look at this design thinking steps in perspective, this is the amount of time ideally you have to spend. Okay, now you can get it. For example, you have one hour, you're spending one hour, for example, it might be three months, it might be six months also. Okay, many of the startup founders, if you read their story, they have spent more time iterating it, iterating the problem, than actually starting it. Like a company called Mastech. It was founded in the colony in Godrej in, in near Mumbai. So these four founders were living in a room, okay, in a society. And for six months, they were just brainstorming what they really want to do in life. What would be their you know, idea? What would be their solution? After six months, you know, after their neighbors wondering what these guys are doing day in, day out, discussing and chattering all the time. After six months, they were able to come up and formulate Mastic. So you can see over here, if you have one hour of time, roughly, you will be spending 25 minutes, you know, to empathize, five minutes to reframe, roughly uh, 10 minutes to ideate, and then 20 minutes to prototype and test in the market. Now, your product might fail when you test in the market. People might say, oh, this is garbage. I don't like it. What do you do then? Do you leave it there? Anyone? You can type it in the chat box. What happens once someone says, yeah, Sumit Mulgaonkar, former CEO of Tata Motors. Yes. Thank you, Pramod, sir. What do you do when your prototype fails in the market? Anyone? Do you stop there? Leave everything? You have empathized, you have reframed the problem, you have ideated, now you have some prototypes. In prototypes, people are not responding as you expected. You have two, three prototypes. What do you do? What could be next thing? It's okay, you can be wrong. You can give it a try. We all are learning over here. Identify the root cause, okay? What else? What can I do? We go to empathy step again. Uh, Gantavya Sharma. Good answer. But we need not go to empathy only directly. We can also go back to ideation. We need to reframe what we ideated, how we ideated. Did we reframe it? Okay. If we found that we have not probably reframed it, then we go back to empathy, okay, as Gantabya said. So it is not a very rational process. You did empathy, you reframed it, you ideated, you have prototype, oh, you got the market, you are having the product launch in the market. It is not so goody goody fairy tale story, okay. So it might happen that at one of the stages, there might be things going up and down. So you need to reframe, you need to brainstorm again. Right? Yes, very good. Obviously, uh, you need to understand what they found uh, disappointing. That's how you take feedback from consumer. So you show them the prototype and you ask them. You again become empathetical. You again reframe what problems they had. You again think of ideation that these are the aspects I can add to it or I can remove from it. Maybe I need to work on the color. Maybe, um, you know, if you're designing some food, so maybe you need to add some flavor to it, right? If you're working on some product, so maybe changing the shape, maybe changing the size of it, maybe changing the, you know, some kind of an attribute. If it's an app, you need to work on UX design, right? How, you go, how friendly it could be for people to actually scroll to the app, to find the things on the app. So these are certain questions which you need to ask. And it always starts with why, you know, why you want to do it why you want to solve the problem. Then comes how, and then comes what. How you are, why you're going to solve problem, how you're going to solve problem, and what is that you're going to measure, whether you are successful. So in this also, it is really important. In empathy, you are asking why you are solving, and what are the problems faced by. You are acting like a SpongeBob. You reframe it, right? You ideate it. So this is how you are, ideation is your how. Prototyping and testing is your what. 
it answers your what you measure to what extent did customer say okay he is happy with it to what extent they were not happy with it what changes you can make so anything and everything with your product it may be color taste you know size shape uh, and uh, you know it, it, it list is never ending actually for some product so you can list it out and you can ask the consumers to give feedback on it and then you come back you re ideate right you re ideate and then you come again come up with prototypes and you take again back to your consumer so that is how you actually do this whole process this is in a nutshell what design thinking you know in a one hour could be explained i have some examples again i would like to share it when you talk about design thinking you are trying to solve problems and majorly there are three types of problems first known knowns okay you know how to solve them known unknowns you know ways to find out how to solve them and third one is big unknowns you don't know how to solve them because you don't know the root cause which are the blind spots someone also mentioned it in the chat box i guess right then comes uh, an example for all these like you are you are pilot and due to bad weather your flight is having turbulence so you switch off the autopilot and you go on manual this requires execution and implementation and checklist thinking when you are known unknowns you know and you are solving the problem it requires test research sort and solve for example your mobile crash what could have caused it you require a mindset okay then big unknowns customer ignores your product how can you understand it why it happened it has to be immersive it has to be engagement based it needs to have feedback right when you say engagement you are talking about feedback and this is where design thinking comes to rescue to identify the unknowns why something is happening okay most of the times a product you might make the buyer might not be the end user right for example mammy poco pants is not endorsing this brand here but nappies for example is not used by the people who are actually buying it for their you know toddlers so toddlers actually use it but after wearing it if the toddlers are crying a lot of time they cannot as well speak about it right so how you can gain those insight from these people how you can gain insight from the parents of these toddlers it's a big challenge right you will never kind of come to know so you need to actually have you know some people you need to experiment it with them give some nappies for their kids to wear and understand their challenges what are the perspectives they have so design thinking helps you with solving the right problems and uh, problem solving process is about lean startup agile thinking execution okay then three major steps to create business value are exploring testing and execution so we have just in the process of design thinking we try to identify the problem exactly what is the root cause then we test it using the lean startup and agile method and then execute it by finding the market fit of for product so what the problem you have and matching the right product is a challenge okay and then product needs to have a market fit where the consumers can actually identify themselves buying it and the world is already filled of useless products you can see some pictures on the screen where they are uh, you know some examples of the products designed by humans which we don't use their usability you know is in existential to sum up design thinking in one quote i would say if i had an hour to solve a problem i would spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem and 5 minutes thinking about the solutions right and i guess this quote by einstein fits very well to problem solving and i design thinking is one of the tools for problem solving right so some examples for you with respect to customer empathy okay this is the first example uh 
there are several hats which people have worn in this picture you can see right figuratively wear many hats try to experience the same as your customer does uncover hurdles pains and inconvenience observe what people do from a distance to capture insights about your customer right and then capture what people say and you know what people say they do uh, only one rule applies engagement should take place in real environment so whenever you are talking about for example you know understanding the people's perspective of uh, uh, wearing hats or why they choose xyz design it is really important if you are building a hat business you need to go to people engage with them observe them understand their you know part of the story and then start building it the other example over here uh, is a very interesting one it has to do with mri scanner you now kids also uh, kind of use mri scanner I'm like there are situations where they have to be taken there and the mri scanning machine room it's not that exciting right so you need to be immersive you need to think like a child how you can make it more attractive in the last picture you can see it's a kid friendly mri where simple commands to the scan could be you know accurately become the part of the advantage so so they are actually going to the space not thinking it's something like a hospital but like a kindergarten which is playful you can see the vibrant colors so instead of thinking it as a mri scanner the kid might think it's kind of a spaceship because kids you know quite often cry when they see new things they don't easily adapt to the, uh, certain things it is really important for us to think from their perspective to build something like this the third example i would like to share is water wells installed by ngos but they are not used why they are not used because people or the kids or the young ones in the community have to carry that water from a very far distance right most of the times it might happen the bucket falls off the you know the water is wasted or they don't actually want to carry this so what do you do you engage with the people you try to listen to their story what challenge they have right how you can fix that problem so coming up with a solution like a 90 liter hippo roller it enables user to collect five times more water than single bucket which you know you can see in the picture the kids are carrying and it improves water access yeah drinking problem is solved right hygiene problem is solved right so this is in a nutshell what design, design thinking does to us uh, it is a very important aspect in our whole ecosystem of startups and entrepreneurship whatever problem you are trying to solve how effectively you can think from customer perspective putting yourself in their shoes and try to identify you know how you can come up with brilliant solutions okay so uh, we have some 5 6 minutes left i guess so there is a, a problem statement for all of you how might we improve the grocery shopping experience in a manner that positively impacts people and environment so randomly think about certain aspects it has to do with the first step empathy what can we do what all ideas come to your head how we can make grocery shopping experience you know which is positively impacting the people as well as the environment what could be your thoughts on this think about some random as i said think like a god how you can fix this problem what is that super power which, which you will use to make it happen then making doing those things could be thought of whether it is doable or not and what is the best which we can do okay komal has written what problems they face while shopping so that solutions can be developed okay so we are talking about what might be improve in this so you have gone for grocery shopping recently komal what did you like what you did not like think about it most of the time we don't think it this way right next time when you will go after listening to this session to grocery shopping or you might do any activity you might think it design thinking way how this could have been better maybe getting into the bus maybe traveling in a metro in delhi 
maybe you know you're buying something from a, a supermarket or a grocery shop for that matter so what is that could be improved in a grocery shopping experience many of you might be going right maybe the time taken unavailability of products right so what can we do in this sense very good insight we require a lot of time to travel it's a big outlet and if i don't find what i like i'll be like oh why did i come all the way over here to buy it uh, one big problem which i saw is like queuing up for the payment while checking out from the store that's a big problem in big bazaar <laughs> that's a good insight and there is something which has been done at some places can you give Wal an example yeah walmart has done this so it's like uh, you can just go in and buy the products and just the moment you check uh, uh, go out from that their store it automatically deduct from your credit card so walmart has done this i know so they call is like uh, in and out store i don't know what's the exact word there are some more examples yeah i would i would be happy to listen from the students who are you know fitness freak you know this session how many of you know decathlon have you been to recently to decathlon you can do online payment and uh, you just have to drop in whatever you have bought in a bucket and it has already scanned and prepare the bill you just have to swipe your card and you go no lines uh mcdonald's tried to do it with online reservation they have a you know a screen where you can actually make the payment so you don't have to go in the queue right so these are some examples how people might have thought about it design thinking starts with questioning things around you why this is like this why it cannot be like that it needs a creative mindset it needs imaginative power it's not possible for everyone to be you know quite imaginative but that does not stop you from gaining those skills being creative and imaginative right amazon go also has this yes, uh, this feature i guess okay so this thoughts to ponder upon i would uh, just brief a little bit about apple this was a survey conducted by one of uh, the top uh, you know magazines as you can see abc news paste magazine complex magazine and all and you can see the top brands in the first rank it's all apple 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 everywhere right how it was possible they make prototypes of the product which they are planning to invest millions of rupees and they take this prototype to their ceos and then it is given for mock ups to fancy models corporation it's a model making company run in fremont by ching yu a model maker in hong kong and then this mock ups are actually you know kind of a prototype given to some people to give feedback and that's how they come up with some innovative designs right so another example how apple does it and that's why apple being one of the you know top innovative companies in the world so this process they are using and they are using design thinking extensively right it could be used in their offices not only for products and service how you design your office how creative it could be for people to collaborate maybe your schools colleges are there sections where people can come and brainstorm discuss certain things how is the color inside your classroom does it affect your learning how can it create an impact A lot of things are there um uh, i would end this session by uh, giving you an example of uh, this uh, you know this is a uh, this is an ice stupa created by sonam bangchuk uh, who runs a uh, sekmol school also hial university in ladakh so this is created by a simple pipe of 2 3 kilometers one end of the pipe is inserted in a river at a height of say about a uh, 1000 uh, uh, feet or something like that and then the pipe comes down and below where the pipe has reached we raise it to a height of say 50 60 feet to the level at which it is you know at the from where it started and now where we have so we match the potential the water starts coming out because there's a difference in the temperature the water turns into ice cubes 
now so, in himalayas so those, so those who have not heard of sonam wangchu he is uh, the real life example of uh, this uh, punchuk wangdu of three, three idiot yeah the movie is based on him so i had met him in 2016 17 at iit bombay i have also delivered a lecture at hial in just in september 2019 before corona pandemic started and uh, this is the school which he has built this school does not have electricity supply in the morning it has uh, a system designed on its own in winters there are temperature minus 25 degrees outside and you can just wear a t-shirt and travel inside the classroom in the school now they have designed it using earthen you know material as a as a borders or you can see the walls then they have used glass they have used plastic with the help of plastic when the sunlight falls it you know increases the temperature of the air inside the school and that's how it maintains the temperature inside to a level where humans can sustain easily quite a innovative way and very simple way of doing it no high tech things over here like apple use a lot of technology so design thinking processes coming up with innovative solutions is not that difficult if you think very simple way like you know uh, uh, you can come up with these kind of solutions also there are many of such they have come up with they in fact created an ice hockey ground in front of their school and that is the first ice hockey ground Uh, or you know the tournament is played across india over the years so many years that was the first one created by sonam bhavu and his team right so these are the certain things which i wanted to share okay and uh, yes mentoring plays a very vital role if you can find mentors early in your life it could be really great for you uh, and if you want you can connect with me on these social media handles we are already short of time so i'll quickly take few questions omesh pratap there is one student he has raised his hand pratap bodapati he wants to say something pratap you yes. can yes pratap go ahead uh, so what we are my observation is whenever we are conducting this programs or anything we are only concentrating and looking at a metro level people is not yeah. and is not nothing to do with the actual indian who lives in the rural and where they have a lot of other problems which we don't visualize or realize is it are, are we only looking at the commercial aspect of everything or are we really empathy with these people who are there down there absolutely uh, the example which i shared about sekmol uh, the school which is run by sonam bang chutan the ice stupa he did it out of his understanding of the problems faced by villagers of not having clean drinking water uh, there are many such examples where design thinking has come to rescue where there is no monetary aspects only connected to it in nepal there was a situation where a lot of premature like kids were dying due to premature delivery now they wanted incubators over there they were not able to buy those incubators because they were costing like 75000 to 1 lakh there was a startup which came with a simple idea of using sleeping bags used by mountaineers on everest to keep the kids warm it did not require electricity and the product which was costing like 1 lakh rupees or 75000 that came drastically down to 2 to 3000 rupees so uh, there are thousands of examples available where money was ex- exactly not the outcome only where this processes were used uh, many of us call jugad also to these things right in villages you'll find vehicles which you don't see on uh, metros which people have designed on their own there is a great example of vidyut cycles it was a viral on linkedin recently where he, a guy uh, designed a, a what we can say rechargeable system for the ghoda cycles used by kirana stores the black cycle the the old one which we had and you can fix it in any of these cycles which is you know rechargeable you can power your mobile phone also with it and for 20 uh, you know 20 or kilometers it, it can go on single charge so it saves energy of the you know a farmer or it can also help them to go for a longer distance uh, but very sleek design you will find these 
his videos also on YouTube. It was, I really liked that product uh, from the design thinking perspective. Oh, thank you. And uh, for my example, if you would ask, uh, in 2014, I created a solar lantern using compact discs. The CDs which are thrown away, they have reflective surface inside, which is quite natural. So you put an LED light closing the disc from four sides and put a rechargeable LED bar, which could be powered by solar energy. And there you go. We distributed it in villages across Maharashtra through my issue. Uh, and uh, to my surprise, it's working still fine. So this is, I'm talking about 2014. This is 2022. Uh, they are still using it. And within four hours, it gives a power of six to seven hours. So there are many such examples where monetary aspect is not the only concern, but yes, design thinking, without it, we cannot come up with an intelligent solution. So thank you for this question, Pratap Chi. Yeah, thanks, man. Okay. Uh, any other questions you might have? I would be happy to answer those. Yeah, Umesh, hi, this is Pramod Joshi. With your permission, I don't have a uh -huh. question I wanted to share. Let me come on this. Uh, yeah, I wanted to share an example of design thinking. And maybe it is from a time when design thinking itself as a phrase was not present. So when I was living in California, uh, you know, Nissan, the motor uh, company from Japan, they were trying to launch a utility vehicle in California. And what they did was they flew in two design engineers from Japan and they told them to live, live, live with American family for a year. So those engineers had nothing to do but just live uh, in those families as a member and observe. And uh, they found out over a period of time that Americans, because uh -huh. they going to an office and having their breakfast on the way. They pick up from McD or, you know, coffee and all that. So to cut a long story short, in the design of their utility vehicles, the cup holders, the holders inside, they, they built about nine cup holders in the utility van for the driver, the, the husband, the wife, the kids, you know, and, and that became one of the hot sellers because of cup holders inside the vehicle was, you know, the engines and Everything about the vehicle, everybody was doing the same. But this allowed them to find a solution to a very uh, basic problem of people going in cars and making sure that their coffee or tea is not spilled during the drive. So I thought this would be a good thing to share with our students. And I also agree with Pratap that we should not only look at metros or rich people. Design yeah. thinking can be used for solutions to very mundane a routine problem. And in fact, if our kids uh, who study in Matra, if they can go to villages and spend time and feel the empathy of a you know farmer or a housewife, I'm sure yeah. they can find many, many problems to which uh, creative solutions could be found. So with Absolutely. Ravi, I, yeah, I think Ravi, uh, this, for me, this has been a great learning experience. So I thank Umesh for taking us through this journey. Thank and you, I think Ravi, Ravi need to take this forward in action, you know, we need to take uh, this is a good session, but it will not have much value unless we make these students follow some of these. Principles. So, Ravi, over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you sir. Uh, and thank you, Umesh. I really like how you simplify the concept of design thinking by putting it in a like why, what, and how. That's really good way to see the design thinking. Sometimes we really complicate uh, that design thinking is something which, very, which is a very complex process. But I really like the way you put it, why, what, and how approach. That's really good. I request each participant to uh, fill the feedback form. And there is also one contest that Umesh is doing, which is you can, uh, you have the opportunity to win a copy of his book, which is the, uh, Umesh, which book you are talking about here? Uh, this is the fun of being in a startup and another copy would be Startup Chanakya. Uh, okay. So these are the two books. Can we can we ask the participants to turn on the cam so I can, you know, click yes, some yes, pictures? Yes. Yeah, please. Uh, 
so participant we request you if you can just uh, switch on your camera you can start your video now i just uh, change the security i request each and uh, participant to just turn on their video so that we can have you can take one good snapshot of this session i think it was really wonderful and uh, like promoter said a uh, really learning for myself also so request all the participant please if possible please turn on your video just for 2 or 3 minutes okay i guess we can take a thank you sumati <laughs> short and sweet session yes uh, so let's let's put on a smile and we'll take up snap thank you so much hi gantavya and now i see how you look like it helps in design thinking <laughs> when you see things you observe you know who you are talking to that's like turning on camera is is very much must when you are interacting in virtual session otherwise it just seems like you're talking to walls but uh, thank you once again pramod sir for this opportunity uh, manoj kumar ji uh, to people who have asked wonderful questions i have pasted my uh, website link we can connect on linkedin also i would be happy to help in any ways and ravi sir let's meet up sometimes for some kind of a hands on workshop sure, sure. yeah we will definitely reach out to you for uh, being one of the speaker for our e conclave Sounds we good. hope to see you offline at our campus thank you thank you so much yeah take care and, and uh, bye bye for all the participant we also have another session on critical thinking so please join this with uh, using the same link at 2 o'clock thank you so much sir generally sir i prefer to have segmentation sir because sir the course is able to use the painting sir that and please fill the feedback form also i'll keep this uh, meeting hosted for a while so that everyone can go through the link thank you